guys and girls, Raj here, back with another video. I am an enterprise solutions architect working at AWS. In this video, we are going to go over the differences between EKS CTL and kubectl. Also, we are going to dive deep on kubectl command, the syntax, how it is made up of different parts, and see some important kubectl commands to remember. And finally, we'll do a demo of both EKSCTL and kubectl. All right, let's get started. So let's start with EKSCTL. What is EKSCTL? So EKSCTL is a CLI tool for creating clusters on EKS. It is easier than console. And when I show you guys and girls the demo, you will see. And it abstracts a lot of stuff. Uh, so when you spin up EKS cluster or a EKS for forget cluster, there are a lot of things that happens behind the scenes. Uh, for example, the forget cluster currently can only uh, work on private subnet. Uh, so your VPC needs to have private subnet or a VPC needs to be spun up uh, with private subnet and then security group and all that stuff. EKS CTL does all that for you. And when you submit a EKS CTL command, it actually submits a cloud formation with all those resources that you need uh, behind the scenes. So Almighty You submits a command which looks something like this. EKS CTL create cluster, and then it creates a Amazon Elastic Container Service for Kubernetes or EKS or an EKS cluster for AWS Fargate. So one thing to note, EKS CTL, as the name suggests, only works with EKS cluster. So what are the things you could do with EKS CTL command? So you can create, get, list, and delete cluster. So creation and deletion are the most common use case for EKS CTL. Uh, beyond that, you can create, drain, and delete node groups. You can scale a node group, update a cluster, etc. One thing to note again, that EKS CTL only works on EKS. So what is kubectl? Uh, so this is a hugely uh, popular tool. Uh, so kubectl is a CLI for running commands against resources in Kubernetes cluster. Uh, so what are some examples of resources in the Kubernetes cluster, uh, such as the pod, uh, deploy, uh, replica set, and there are many more. And kubectl command uh, communicate via cluster API server. So anytime you submit a kubectl command, it goes to the API server of the Kubernetes control plane, and then it executes what needs to be done. And the big difference between kubectl and ekstl is uh, kubectl works for any Kubernetes cluster, not just EKS. So in this case, uh, let's say the almighty developer uh, submits a command like kubectl get pod, and this is gonna get executed against the API server on the Kubernetes cluster, and then you will get the pod information. Doesn't matter which uh, platform this Kubernetes is running on. Uh, could be EKS, could be Fargate, uh, could be Google Kubernetes Engine, could be Kubernetes on EC2, and many more. So now let's take a look at kubectl uh, command syntax. So kubectl has uh, these four parts. Every kubectl command starts with kubectl, and then there's this command, there is this type, there is this name, and there's this flags. So what, what, is, what are some examples of kubectl commands? Uh, so basically, uh, let's say get, which is very, very popular. Uh, so get displays uh, one or many resources, basically list them. Uh, so what would you do is like you will put kubectl and then get, and then you have to put the types of resources that you are trying to uh, get information about. Uh, so what are some type of resources? Uh, it could be pods or short from PO, namespaces or NS deployments or deploy, replica sets or RS, and many more. And then you can specify a name, so this is optional. Um, and if you omit this, all resource details displayed. So I'm gonna explain this in a minute. And the last is the flag option. So flags are optional as well. Um, there are a couple of very popular options are dash dash file name or dash f. Uh, so what this does is you can pass a file name after this path and the file name, and then uh, Kubernetes 
uh, will go and create resources uh, from this file. Uh, so these files are generally manifest files. And then, or, and also you can put dash dash output or dash o. Uh, so basically whatever the output from the command is, uh, it's gonna put it in a particular format. So you can put like dash o yaml, and then it's gonna uh, print uh, the output from the command in a yaml format, and there are many more, but these two are the most popular ones. And we'll see an example of this as well. So all available command and resource types are in this link. I'm gonna put this in the description as well. Okay, so now let's take a look at a couple of actual examples of kubectl and things will become more clear. Okay, so these are, these are our kubectl syntax. So let's say you have a Kubernetes cluster running. Uh, maybe it has three pods, right? Uh, then the name of the pods are pod one, pod two, and pod three. So let's say I want information about pod one. So what should be my command? Uh, so I'm gonna put kubectl, and to get information, I'll put get, and the resource type is pod, and then I'll put the name of the pod, pod one. Now what if I want information about all these pods, uh, so how do I do that? You guessed it right. So in this time, you will omit the name parameter. So all you will give is kubectl, get, and the resource type pod, and it will give information about all the running pods. And again, so that you guys and girls don't get confused, uh, so this resource type can be represented in multiple ways. Uh, you can do pod or pods or even shorthand PO. So basically kubectl get pod, it's same as kubectl get PO. Now let's say uh, you want to get the information, however you want it in YAML format and not just tabular format that the command gives you. Uh, okay, so in that case, you have to use flags. So how would the command look like? kubectl get pod, and then you can put a name of the pod, pod2, or omit the name uh, if you want the pod information for everything. And then you put flags, dash o, and then yaml. So basically, the output will be formatted in yaml. So these are some of the most used kubectl commands. Uh, so the one that you will see a lot is kubectl apply minus f and then the name of a manifest file. So what happens is uh, generally you define a deployment or services in this file and then you apply it and then the resources are created or updated based on this manifest file. Uh, and this way of declaring resources is the declarative way. So if I have to give an example, think of it as uh, spinning resources uh, using CloudFormation and then changing them using chain sets. So whatever you do, uh, you do this from the CloudFormation itself. Uh, so your CloudFormation template is kind of your documentation of what's being spun up. Uh, however, um, you can go and do things separately outside of CloudFormation, right? So let's say you spin up EC2 using CloudFormation and then you go to the console or you go to CLI and you change the security group of the EC2 or you attached another security group on the EC2. Uh, so in that case, uh, the resource drifted from the original CloudFormation. So, the, so if someone looks at the CloudFormation template, it doesn't represent uh, the resources that's running. Uh, so similarly in Kubernetes, uh, there's another way called imperative way. What that means is uh, instead of keeping everything in the manifest file and creating updating through manifest, uh, you just go and uh, submit commands and change the cluster. Let's say you have uh, two copies of a pod running and then you want to make the three copies of the pod, right? Uh, so you can do this two ways. Uh, one is uh, the declarative way, which is you go to the manifest file and change the replica set option from two to three, and then you run this kubectl apply command, and then it's gonna go and uh, create one more replica of the pod. And next time anyone else on your team look at the manifest file, they would know, oh, okay, so uh, it should be running three replica sets. The another way is instead of changing the manifest file, you can just go and just submit a kubectl command uh, to just change the replica set. 
similar to uh, going to console in the EC2 and adding another security group in the previous example. So that is the imperative way. Uh, so declarative way is the best way. You should always do things in the cluster using declarative way. Okay, I think I have beat the horse to death on this uh, kubectl apply. And these are some of the other commonly used commands. I'm not gonna go through each of them. Uh, however, I want to go through the last command, kubectl exec dash it, and then the name of the pod dash dash slash bin slash bash. So this is a very powerful command. It will log you in to the shell of the running container. Uh, so generally one pod runs one container. Uh, so once you pass this pod name, it's gonna open up a shell and then give you a command line in that running container. So pretty powerful stuff. Okay, let's do a demo. Um, let's spin up a EKS cluster using EKS CTL and then uh, let's use kubectl uh, to deploy nginx using manifest file, the declarative way, and then understand the declarative way of life. So I'm gonna do some updates and then you will understand how uh, this works. All right, let's jump into the demo. So before I submit the EKSCTL commands, I just wanted to show uh, two things. One is uh, this is the EKS cluster. So you can see there are no clusters that's running now. And also this is CloudFormation screen. Uh, you can see that there is no uh, CloudFormation stack, uh, which is here uh, with the filter EKS. Okay, let's go to terminal now. I assume uh, you have AWS uh, configure set up and also you have installed EKSCTL and kubectl. I'll give the link to how to install all those uh, down below, but it's pretty straightforward. So, okay, let's try to uh, create a EKS cluster. Create cluster, and then you have to pass some parameters. Uh, name of the cluster, what you should name? Demo, how about demo EKS? Okay, and then you have to specify version so EKS supports Kubernetes 1.15. Okay, so let's create some nodes and then you can put nodes. Uh, I need two nodes. And then how about nodes minimum one and nodes maximum two. Okay, so let's submit this. And you can see uh, it says deploying stack EKSCTL demo EKS cluster. So you can see this EKSCTL demo EKS cluster create in progress. So if I click this, uh, so it actually creates a lot of stuff. Like I was saying, it takes care of a lot of the heavy lifting. Uh, so I'm actually gonna pause the video. This takes 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, so I'm gonna come back once the cluster is up and running. Generally at this point, I ask you guys and girls to like and subscribe the video. However, today uh, I'm going to ask you guys and girls to stay calm uh, with whatever is going on in the world these days. Uh, listen to your uh, country's health authorities and we'll get through this together. Uh, also, personally, I'm saving a bunch of time on commuting since I'm forced to uh, work from home. Uh, so I'll probably be making a little bit more videos. And also, uh, I got this book. I want to get through this uh, before uh, next two weeks. So I suggest you guys and girls uh, pick a thing and then study uh, in next two weeks since you guys are saving some time on commute as well. Okay, so the cluster is complete, uh, but since we said also create a node group, uh, you can see that now it's submitted another stack to create the node group. Uh, so, okay, so it's creating the node group. Uh, all right, I'm gonna pause again and come back uh, in a few minutes. Okay, so both the stacks are done. Uh, so if we go back to our terminal, uh, you can see EKS cluster uh, in this region is ready. And also what it does is um, it also saves the cluster information in this dot cube slash config. Uh, so if you just type kubectl, it's automatically gonna connect to this cluster. Um, so let's try it out, shall we? Uh, so let's do kubectl get nodes. Okay, so remember in the command, we said nodes two, so nodes minimum one, nodes maximum two. Uh, so you can see there are two nodes. Uh, also, let me show you in the console, in the EC2 console, you can see the two worker nodes. Okay, so now <laughs> let's run um, our favorite command, kubectl, 
get pods. So we should not get anything because all we did is deployed the control plane and two nodes, right? We did not deploy any pods. So no resource found. Uh, so we are going to uh, deploy this Nginx application using a manifest file. So this is the manifest file we are going to use. Uh, so I'm going to go over this very quickly because each concept in Kubernetes uh, takes some time to explain. So if I explain every little concept, this video will be like one hour long. Uh, so anyway, but the kind tells you what kind of resource uh, it implements. So it's a deployment. Name of the resource will be test. And then replicas two means uh, there will be uh, two uh, pods that's deployed. And the spec uh, determines what kind, what will be inside the pod. Uh, so it's going to pull the image of Nginx version 1.12 uh, from Docker Hub. And the images will be deployed with the name Nginx as well. OK, so I'm going to uh, run this using the kubectl apply command. So kubectl and then the command is apply. The flag is f. We get the path slash name of the file. Okay, let's do this. Okay, it says created. So now let's run kubectl get pods again. So there we go, uh, two pods are running because the replica set we set as two uh, and inside this pods uh, Nginx is running. So let's do one more thing, kubectl get pods dash o wide. So you can see uh, it gives the node information that the pod is running in and a couple of other things. So let's try one more command, kubectl get pl yaml okay so you can see uh, it gives the information in yaml and it gives a lot of details as well okay and then let's run a describe kubectl describe deploy test okay and it, it gives you a little bit more detail so you can see it says image Nginx 1.12. So, okay, um, now let's do a thing. Let's do this. Uh, instead of replica two, uh, let's make it three, right? So I'm gonna come here and change this, save it, uh, and then uh, run the kubectl apply command again. So let's clean this up. So before you do that, if we run kubectl get pods, you should get two pods. And after we change the replica set to three, uh, you should see a three. So actually, kubectl get rs is another command, which should give you a replica set uh, for this deployment. Okay, so let's rerun the kubectl apply command. Here we go. Okay, uh, should be pretty quick. Uh, so let's see, kubectl get pods. Boom, here we go. Uh, so this one is pending, so it will be up uh, in actually a minute or less. And then if we get the replica set, you can see desire three, current three, ready two. So this will come up in a little bit. Uh, so that is the declarative way of doing it. Uh, so if you if someone comes and looks at this uh, manifest file, uh, they would know that there are three replicas of the pods running Nginx and everything. Okay, and the last, uh, let's delete the cluster using EKSCTL as well. So EKSCTL, delete cluster, name, demo EKS. Okay, and it should go and clean up everything. All right, so hopefully, you guys and girls understood uh, what is EKSCTL, what is kubectl, and uh, when to use what and how. All right, guys and girls, that is the video. If you like this video, please smash that like button and click subscribe. I'll see you guys and girls in the next video. Bye.